so hey, it could be a party. <laughs> we can go to the party with this. You see, now going back Let to the match, you know, yeah. when they were killing Christians, right? These were black people they were killing. They were black people it's they was crazy. killing, and they was they, these were the people that they was usurping their religion from. Okay. You see what I'm saying? See, they was killing the ones they said, no, we got it's just like this to say, look, um, we trying to take this religion. But if we got some people that's got practices that's different than the Romans, we got to take them out if we're going to make this religion central and conduce it to us. So the ones that they were killing was the original Christians. They're saying that the original Christianity don't even resemble the Christianity that we have now. Because original Christianity was a spinoff from the Hebrew aspect, which had a lot of codes and laws. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when they, so those sects that they were killing, it wasn't the, the, it, it, it wasn't they were kill, it, they were killing Romans or they were killing um, people that had the same faith. No, they were trying to cover up the fact that there was groups of people that had another indigenous way of worshiping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see. And they had to get rid of this because Paul, the, the Pauline doctrines had much more um, uh, uh, what you call a, a pseudo right. type of practices that the Roman people could get with. You got to realize we're talking about people that used to go to Colosseums just to see black people getting killed. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we talk about people like Caligula with all kinds of perverted sex acts and stuff like that. And we talk about people where a central part of them mm -hmm. was gay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if, if we got to have a new religion, we're going to have to have a new religion that can accommodate that gay stuff. And that later on became the Catholic Church. Wow. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, the original Hebrew say, if a man don't have no kids, may he rot. But all of a sudden now, the doggone priests went from patriarchs to having a hundred head of children and wives to you can't have no wife. And all that is is some type of central way to accommodate Homosexual. homosexuality. Mm -hmm. That from the Greeks... And the Romans, it was asexual. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You see, so a lot of these things, a lot of this stuff that we, we have coming down to us, but now you must understand this, though. You must understand this. Now, if you, if you, if you look at history from, let's say, if you're out in space and you're looking at it as a, as a central point, it, would, it, 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 it might not be as, as tragedy, as tragic, but it's personal to us because we... <laughs> Got the rough part of it. But if you try to look at how the world goes, and then give you an example. The spirit world told us one time that the Bible had to come into existence of a lot of moral code or ethics for the Europeans coming up from the lethargy of a barbarism. So they had to have a code book because they didn't have the type of rites of passages whereas in Africa you just didn't do things because you were raised in a society that has rites and passages that stuff is not heard of. You see, whereas these people were coming out of barbarism and they needed them. They didn't have the type of rites and passages. So they needed a book that they can go to the book and say, don't do this and don't do that. Mm -hmm. And later on, that became the central part of the religion as a code of ethics. But in our honesty, that was a, a, a rites of passage for the Europeans. So in so many words, they needed that book. The Bible was central. Look what they did when they got the Bible and how they killed the world. Can you imagine that they didn't have that? Can You can just imagine when the Romans got out of pocket, threw away their religions. They don't deal with Zeus which is Jupiter at the time, they don't deal with that, you know, they did the point where as the Senate and Caesar is God. 
church. And look what they could do just by not having a code of ethics. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not having a code of ethics. So a lot of these things that went on, the reason why the Christianity had to come up out of that, it wasn't written for us. It wasn't for our history. It was for later day Europeans. Now, dealing with that, we have to understand this. Looking back to the ancient Egyptians. Looking back to the ancient Egyptians. Um, first of all, I want to say this about Rome. Rome had to come into being to sort of even the Africans could have a central experience of living with white people later on. So the Rome had to come in and be brutal because even what's the name said it? Look, he said, um, uh, Hannibal's father. And Hannibal's father is called a Moor. Mm -hmm. Um, even Hannibal's father said, look, those people, the Romans are people that coming in and you'll have to deal with them. But what he was trying to say here is that you're going to have to have this experience. And what I mean by that is this. To this day, black people are at a disadvantage of dealing with white people because it's a simple, simple fact that we think that white people think like us, and they don't. You see, we think in a humane way, and we always make the mistake saying, well, this white man, he gonna, he's going to deal with this like I would deal with it. And we run up and butt, as they say down south. Because the simple fact we don't understand, this man has a whole nother mindset. You see what I'm saying? He has a whole nother mindset. You see, our morality is not based on laws and code. If our morality is based on us being the original humans. Certain things we didn't do. You see what I'm saying? Because we were the blueprint of humanity. Right. We were humanity. So they were saying, look, there's going to be a whole lot of non-human activity. And when you say non-human, let's, let's clear this up. Non-African activity. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's going to hit the world. So Rome has to come into being to be this brutal mirror so that we can have some type of calculation on how to deal with these people. Let me, let me explain what I'm talking about here. Let's say you got a whole bunch of wild animals. You got to put them in a cage or you got to put them in an area you got to see what eats this and what eats that and experiment with them just to see how these people are going to be. You see, now we know that the Egyptians already knew because we got text, the, the, uh, 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 the text, this guy, Alan H. Gardner, which is a great Egyptologist, um, wrote on these texts. It's a text in France called Abduction Extraordinaire. Never was translated into English, but it says, that these, it talks about these people. He said, these people that live in, in Europe with these mountains, that their way of communication is not a clear one because they're always grumbling. Because they were saying they even had to be taught how to talk, how to speak. Count Vaughn talked about that in the ruins of empire. But in this Egyptian text, in this Egyptian text, they said that these people are always grumbling. They have a reprehensible sex act, which means, you know, whatever got a hold, it don't matter. They can even fuck animals. Mm -hmm. These are the Egyptian texts that they held in France and stuff. I was able to look at the only one of these because the book came out called Set the God of Confusion by T.H. Baldy. It's in most libraries, it's in most um it's in most uh college libraries, but it was never published as far as a book. Central publication is mostly in college libraries and stuff like that. 
you know, the colleges got books that they never published to the public. They only published for the colleges. And this book set the God of Confusion. They actually have these texts from France in there. But they talk about these people, you know, and they say these people do not announce the day of battle. So you have to understand what they're trying to say. They say these people here are unfair. You see, if you have a disagreement, you're all going to come together and you're going to disagree, have the right to disagree. These people here will kill you without even you even knowing that you even you have a problem with them, or they have a problem with you. So it goes into all, it's, what is, these texts are trying to say in the Egyptian terms. And these texts may be about three, 4,000 years old. And what they were trying to say, they was looking at the Europeans and all, you know what I'm saying? And they were saying, you know, uh, 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 these people, you know, these people are not, don't, they were trying to tell the people because these were in religious texts, don't look at these people and say that they got the same type of mindset that you have as a human mindset. This is something new that's coming to the earth. So by the time the Romans came, that's what why Hannibal and them father said, you're going to have to deal with these people. But Hannibal went in and he kicked their ass. They said in one day battle, he killed 70,000. You see. And he kicked their behind and they said he, but this is what he did is to show you the mindset. Because the Europeans now looking at this said that he came all the way to the gates of Rome. And they said he turned around and went home. They wanted to know, they can't understand these war generals study him. And they wanted to know, they couldn't understand why did you go in and take Rome? Like they would have done. If they come in for conquest, they're going to conquer it. You see what I'm saying? And they're going to be there for a couple of hundred years until they fall weak. So they're saying, why didn't you take Rome like they took the Indians or Native Americans over here? Or like they took the South Africa? Why didn't you come in? You had them be. But what they didn't understand, and to this day, these European generals can't understand why. He did his battle. He proved his point, And then he went the fuck home. They couldn't understand why he didn't use Rome as a weapon, of, uh, uh, as, as a situation of conquest. It's because that's not his nature. That wasn't his nature to conquer Rome. What he was trying to do was kick them in the ass so he could fortify Carthage for a few more years. You see. And so, you, you see, so it's, it's, it's a lot of things. Which, which later on, so in so many words, Rome had to be so that we could have the experience of what atrocities would come, you see what I'm saying, with later European cultures. Which leads us to the Egyptian priests again, no one again, because they did it twice. They, they said, we got to further this information to Greece and Rome. And then during the time of, of um, Muhammad's invasion into Egypt, the Egyptian priest once again said, we have to take this information to Europe. Now why? They said after they closed the last temple, they closed the last temple of Isis at Philae. For some reason, I don't know if it was spiritual, they said Europe went into a dark age. I think they went into a dark age because after Rome fell, you see what I'm saying? They how never did, had how this. Did Rome fall? Huh? How did Rome fall? Well, it deteriorated based on like anything else from corruption. And Rome fell after its reputation was found out. Rome was weak for a couple of years, but they had killed so many people until they had a representation. You don't mess with Rome. But remember, they said that the, 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 the German vandals, they, they were illiterate, so they didn't get the memo that these people wasn't nothing to fuck with. And they went up in there and kicked their own ass. <laughs> you see. So it deteriorated over the years based on based on um based on corruption. And also they they uh, with Constantine, although he, you know, they say he didn't he kill his mother and his daughter or something like that. 
he turned it into a Christian country and stuff. You see what I'm saying? Um, it was weakened for the simple fact that it meant that they couldn't, if they're going to do the army thing, they're going to have to do it in another fashion. They're going to have to have the Holy Roman Empire. But it's a Holy Roman Empire. So they got to hide behind the Pope when they do these conquests, but it's not going to be the same might of the Caesars. You see what I'm saying? They're just going to have to just rule in another way. In, in actuality, they, they never did fall. They just acquiesced Europe with the religion, so it became a religious domination. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Um, a religious domination and stuff. The military failed, but they had a new way to rule. You see, the new, new way to rule is the same thing when we talked about the Queen of the, uh, Prince Charles after he got his ass whipped over here. They couldn't deal with guerrilla warfare. Mm -hmm. uh, where these rednecks was over here fighting. They said, no, nah, you go over there, they're going to beat you a hundred years. They said, it's a regroup and we will take over financially. And then we'll put, because of the finances, we'll put the heads of the government will be connected to the Queen. And we'll rule that way, rule through secrecy. So, same thing happened with the Egyptian priests after they took, after um, Egypt fell. They said, well, look, and when, uh, you know, uh, uh, when Mah um, and Muhammad was still living when the Arabs invaded, um, invaded um, uh, uh, Egypt. If there was a Muhammad, it could have just been a central priesthood. Because we know Bilal come to find out he was the one who wrote the Quran because if there was a historical Muhammad, he couldn't read or write to the day he died. You see? Mm -hmm. He couldn't read or write to the day he died. And we knew it was some type of Egyptian, Ethiopian priesthood just by the central surah of the star where they mentioned Sirius in the Quran. You see? The moon, Tahuti, the cow, Hathor, you see, mm -hmm. these different these different things that they did means that this used to be this was a part of a mystery system. You see, uh, and, and in this particular case, it probably was an Ethiopian Kushite mystery system because we know Arabia was a part of Kush. We know it had to be a Kushite mystery system based on the first five books of Moses. You see, it, it's not a Central Egyptian thing. It's a it's a it's it's, it's just a of uh, the third coming of Judy Judeo Christian. Mm -hmm. You see. Mm -hmm. But in that particular case, by that time of them, Ethiopia had usurped the whole Hebrew thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And part of Coptic Christianity. So we know who, who put this thing together. You see what I'm saying? It, uh, uh, it, it wasn't translated from Gabriel, but then again, Gabriel could have been a priesthood. But in so many words, after they came and 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 and, and, and dominated and, and, and took over Egypt, the Egyptian priest said, Look, Islam is a new conquest tool. You see, to, to essentially bring Islam into play, they, they had to fight at Mecca and Medina. And it was a kick-ass machine. So they say this is the same kick-ass machine that conquered Egypt. So what we can do, these Egyptian priests, is we can go under the banner of Islam, take all these sacred texts, and go into Europe, and Islam will be a conquest thing, but the religion would be a mystery system. You see, so they so all these ancient Egyptian texts and all this ancient stuff that was translated. So here go again. Here's another translation point. They took Metaneta. They took Greek. They took Coptic. They took Latin. Remember now, the Egyptian priests had already translated stuff into Latin and translated stuff into Greece. Coptic is later day Egyptian. You got Hebrew. But these Egyptian priests are the authors of all these languages and all these texts. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they went to Turkey, Baghdad, Salamanca, Spain, and then they 
translated the Greek, the Latin, the Coptic, the Metanetta into Arabic. Mm -hmm. And then they use it as a central force to open up the 16 universities in Europe to teach the European. It stayed there close to 800 years. Then whatever they brought to Europe, the European preserved. They had these conferences. They had a conference at Toledo. You get Toledo, Ohio. Comes from Toledo, Spain. And from those conferences of Toledo, now this is after that, either right before the expulsion of the Moors in 1492 or right after, they had these conferences of all these texts that the Moors had brought up from Egypt and brought up from around the central ancient world and gave to the Europeans for 800 years close to 800 years. So they took these texts and they had these, 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 they had these, these periods. They call them Renaissance periods. Now, so what they did is they had these conferences and they had these, 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 these uh, festivals or conferences or these Renaissance periods in a place called Toledo. Mm -hmm. And from Toledo, with all those texts and stuff from Toledo, Spain, Cambridge, Oxford in those early universities around Europe opened from the stuff that they preserved from the Moors. Then, after 1492, and a little bit, a couple of years later, they start having the Renaissance period in Italy. Now, remember that this is very key. Because you'll hear these white people talk about the Renaissance period. They'll talk about things like all this learning and all this stuff. Cut off again? No, I'm changing things. Okay. Whenever you hear the Renaissance period, Mom. let me know in your own. Yeah. I'm on. Whenever you hear the Renaissance period in Italy, that was nothing. But them acquiescing the Moorish doctrines. You see, talk about that for a while. They talk about these Renaissance periods and they talk about all this great learning and stuff that happened with the Renaissance stuff from music to art to philosoph uh, philosophical points of view that would be the mindset of the European coming from out of the Middle Ages. They talk about the Renaissance period. Mm -hmm. And all the Renaissance period was is the Pope and the Italians taking advantage of the learning that was given to the Europeans for the last 800 years. By the Moors. So in so many words, here's another period where they basically take all these ancient doctrines of the Moors of an ancient black man and steal it and say it's theirs. Mm 